Hello everyone, this is Rich. I'm back. Um, I'm glad to have you back. I, I, I talked last time, I was talking about a subject, uh, the kingdom slash church, and I want to continue that today. I think this is going to be the last presentation on that. It's a very important topic, uh, so I want to get into it. But uh, I just want to tell you, I'm really enjoying our times together. Uh, I hope you are. I, I'm... Um, I love to explain the scriptures and go through things and and uh, so just you know so here we go and I just want to get into this part about uh, about the kingdom slashes the slash the church and comparing the two this is a very important topic in that the kingdom is something that we must understand um, if we do not understand what the kingdom is our lives are automatically, as Christians, will default back to church. Now, I'm not saying church is wrong, <clears throat> but I, what I want to address here is the difference between the organized church that's going on today and, and, and the church as Jesus sees it, what he'll be coming back for. There is a difference. When we look at the organized church today, and we look mainly at denominational churches, this sort of thing, we see... We see that, and then when you read the Bible and you read about the church, uh, we know there is a difference between what you read in the book of Acts, for example, and when they talked about the church in the book of Acts. And in other words, when the people of God got together, when they were forming a community, you can see that happening throughout the book of Acts all the time. And what was happening during those times is very much different than what is happening in the organized church today. Now, the last time I talked about this, I think I ended up with a scripture. I want to start with the scripture again. And this is out of Ephesians 3.10. Um, it says, His intent was now through the church, the manful wisdom of God should be made known to the, to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to his eternal purpose, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now, this is showing us what uh, what God is going to be doing in the church. Um, and so we it, 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 it describes this manifold wisdom, the wisdom of God being put on display through the church. Now, do are we seeing that today? That, that's highly questionable. When we look at church today, we see meetings that are very regimented. We see meetings that are very predictable. Basically, there's about four to five different uh, ways a meeting will, uh, will go. Typically, there's your call to worship. There's your, um, there's your singing, your worship time. There's the preacher will get up and preach his message. There may, there will be announcements. There may or may not be an altar call, and these 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 four or five steps in a service are very much the same throughout uh, months and years. It's it's very predictable. You can go from one Sunday to the next. You pretty much know what's going to happen at exactly what time and so on. And yet, when you read the Book of Acts, you didn't see that happening. I mean, their church, their meetings were unpredictable. You didn't know what was going to happen in those meetings for sure. Sometimes people were just getting healed. Sometimes um, they, they were praying for one another. Other, other times they were sitting around a table and eating and fellowshipping. Um, other times they, they were getting together and talking about the things that were going on uh, amongst themselves during the week. And they were giving testimonies and bringing each other up to speed what was happening in, in their own lives during the week. So their services or their getting together, let me say it that way, was a lot different than what we see in church services today. So when I go through the rest of this and I'm referring about the church, I'm talking about the church today, the organized church. Now we know that in the end, when Jesus comes back, he's coming back for his bride. He's coming back for the church that's perfected. Now I want us to be sure we understand when we're talking about the kingdom versus the church, that the church is not perfect. The church has imperfections. It's a work in progress. On the other hand, the kingdom is perfect. It is not a work in progress. It is, it is a kingdom or a government that's been set up in heaven, been brought down to earth, and it needs no alterations. It's completely perfect. 
So we have two things going on here. We have the work of the kingdom, the activity of the kingdom, and we have the activity of the church. They're not the same, and we need to realize that. I, I want to I wanna address two major things today, and that is the tendency that takes place in church services. And, and I also want to talk about the differences between church activities and kingdom activities. I want to address those two major things today as I go through this. Now... The, the tendency within a church service is, is there's lots of activities within, within the organized church today. For example, when, when, you're, when you're preparing for a meeting, a Sunday meeting, whenever the church gets together, there's a lot of things that go into it. There's the preparing of the lesson. There's getting people to get the, those who take the collection of the money, the greeters at the door, the announcements, the 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 consideration of the building uh these these are things that people especially in leadership are thinking about the the the, uh, the salaries of the people all of the responsibility like i said of the building and making sure the payment of the building gets done um so there there's there's all kinds of activities the financial situations uh committees there's all kinds of things that are activities that take place in churches. And what we have to be careful of is these activities don't get our attention, all of our attention. So that, but the tendency is within a church, organized church meeting today, is these activities tend to draw us, tend to focus us on these things. And that that is those are church activities these are not kingdom activities these kinds of things i just made that i just talked about church activities did not exist in the first generation church why is that well the reason is because jesus he's now gone he, he's been crucified he's ascended but he didn't talk about the church if you remember in my previous teachings i did on the kingdom of god jesus constantly was talking about the kingdom so the first generation church, it was birthed on the, the day of Pentecost, but their idea of church was kingdom. They were talking about the kingdom all the time. And so, and so what's happened over the many years from the first generation church up to current, that's all changed. People are no longer talking about the kingdom. They're talking about the church. Everything has to do with church related issues. And, and so we've, the church, organized church has strayed away from what they should be talking about, and that is the kingdom. Um, and so I want, I want to get into that. Um, and and I, I find that as you talk to most believers, and I've done this, you go around and ask them to explain the difference between the church and the kingdom. They, they don't really have a good understanding between the two. Sometimes they'll say they're one and the same. And so there, and, and if the person does not understand, if you don't understand what the kingdom is, uh, you automatically will default back to church related issues, church activities. And that's where your focus in your life will be. That's what your attentions will go to is that. Now, the sad thing is in most churches today, they're constantly trying to get people to be involved in activities within the church. And in the doing of that, people who, who are involved in church activities, it's real easy to do this. They, for example, somebody who works in the nursery, somebody who's a greeter, somebody who uh, takes, collects the money, does the offering, they can begin to think this is, this is how, this is their calling in God. And it's not at all. This is not. This is not. This is when, when you go back in the Bible, and I don't want to get into this, but uh, the call of God is not church-related activities. But some, most, a lot of Christians think that's their calling. It, that's, that's a big mistake. If you think that's your calling, you're actually missing the call of God on your life, what the real call of God is all about. So we must focus. What we focus on in, what we focus on, herein lies the problem. If we're focusing on church activities, that's what our life is given to. That's what we're going to throw our attention into. Now, we have to remember in Matthew 6, verse 33, it says it very clearly. It says this, Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all things will be given unto you as well. So the Bible makes it very clear. 
Our priority in life is the kingdom. It's not church related activities. And so so here so what so what generally happens in church services and in and uh, people as they go and they get involved in church activities is that's exactly what happens. They get involved in church activities. So what you end up with is now a mixture. You have a mixture of the imperfect, which I'm referring to the organized church and the kingdom. And, and so now you're not getting the full picture. And so you have this mixture and that's going to create problems. Um, the, let, I'll probably say this again, but let me just say it now the outworking of the kingdom in a person's life. When a person understands what the kingdom is all about, the outworking of that is the church. But in our church culture today, we, because we don't understand kingdom, our activity and all of our focus goes on the church. So we have, so the outworking of that is not kingdom and it's a distorted form of the church. Because for the real church to, to for the real church to come forth, we have to be those who understand first and foremost what the kingdom of God is all about. And I've I've, I've addressed that already in my previous teaching, so I don't want to get off track and get onto that. Um, now, another thing that happens many times in when when people go to church services today, they, they get focused on all the activities. Second thing they could get focused on is, are the leadership in the church. And the thing that happens there is many times we get our attention focused on the pastor of the church. It could be the eldership. It could be just leaders in general. And we, we start giving our so much attention to that. Now, I'm, don't misunderstand me in what I'm talking about here. I know the word says very clearly we are, at, we are to submit to our leaders. We're to have a submissive attitude to our leaders. Absolutely. But what I am stressing here is we must remember leaders of churches are going through the same process that everybody else is going through. And that is, if we understand the kingdom, they are, they are maturing, they're growing, they're still part of the process. And so what's most important is, yes, we must have a submissive attitude towards our leaders, but we also must understand the kingdom and have a submissive attitude towards the king. The kingdom... The kingdom is, is Jesus ruling and reigning from heaven in our lives. And we must be able to hear his voice. We must be able to develop a closer and closer relationship with him so that we know what he wants. And so that we're not, so we have, so in this submission to leaders, we also have a submission to Jesus, the king of his kingdom as well. Now, they, they will work hand in hand. They're not in opposition to one another. But what I am saying, if we don't have this cultivating, ongoing, growing relationship with Jesus, with the understanding of what the kingdom's all about, how are we going to grow in a relationship with our leaders? All I'm saying is, if it's going to be with leaders, it's going to be distorted. It's not going to be true if we don't understand the relationship we're supposed to have with Jesus and his kingdom first and foremost. Okay. I want to um, I want to ask you this question: What are, what are the results of having my focus on the church? Now I, I've seen this happen so many times over the years. I've been in church services and in, in, in the organized church. Presently, I'm not. The reason that I'm doing these these teachings uh, is because I want to get the word out so that people will get their attention on the, on the right subjects. One is the kingdom of God. Another one I'll be addressing in the future is, is community. Another one I'll be addressing in the future is discipleship. I find these subjects and others are not really addressed in the organized church that much. And that's, that's sad to see that. So, so I want to, so what happens if somebody is, is uh, focused on the church? Well, typically, they get involved in church activities. Now, if they have any sort of kingdom mindset, if they are, have some sort of understanding of the kingdom, there's going to be a problem because they're going to, they're going to try to focus on that. But, but if you're focused on just the church, 
you're setting yourself up for big disappointments because you are focusing on the wrong thing. And as a result of that, you'll have, you'll have, you'll take, it's easy to take offense to things because a lot of things that are happening in churches, not, there's, there are things happening in churches that can be very negative. And if we're getting our focus on the church, we're getting our focus on negative things as well. So, so as a result, people take offense and then they'll leave the church they're going to, they may go to another church. And then they get offended again by something somebody said or somebody did to them. And then, they'll, and then they may end up just not going to church and just staying home. I got to be very honest with you. I'm talking about people who are, who are born again, people who are saved. And when I see this happen, it makes my heart very sad because they're part of a system that's not functioning correctly because of the lack of the understanding of the kingdom of God. Now, I want, I want to, and, and like I said earlier, out of the understanding of the overflow of the kingdom of God, the church comes forth. Now, I want to explain something that's very important concerning the kingdom of God. All right, the, the kingdom of God involves things on the inside of us. Church activities involve things on the outside of us. We have to learn to decipher the two. For example, when a person gets saved, it says, it says that their spirit is brought back to life. So every person, uh, in the beginning, everybody has a spirit. But when, uh, if you go back to the garden in, when sin came in, the spirit within man died. But when a person gets born again, that spirit comes back to life. And also, as you, and you also get the Holy Spirit, which again lives inside of you. And I'm emphasizing inside of you because this activity of the kingdom of God takes place inside of you. Jesus made a statement. He says, this is, I think it was in John 14. He's talking to his disciples. He said, you've seen the kingdom of God. You've seen the spirit, but the spirit will soon be in you. He's referring to the future, which is now our past. But he's referring to the day of Pentecost. He said, the spirit will soon be in you. What was going on? The disciples were with Jesus and they were seeing Jesus uh, being led by the spirit and moving in the miraculous and healing and doing the supernatural activities. So they were seeing this activity of the spirit working through Jesus. And then they participated in it as well. And he says, but soon this, the spirit that you see an activity around me is going to soon be in you. So we... What we're seeing is kingdom activity is, is something that takes place in you. Again, when you refer to the, we know when we get born again, we get a new heart. It's talked about that in Ezekiel. Well, guess what? Your new heart's in you. It's something in you. Uh, also, it says the laws of God are written on our, on our what? On our hearts. Again, it's an inward work. We know when we do things that are right and wrong, just because we have this, the laws of God in our heart. Um, so everything that has to do with the kingdom has to do with what's going on inside of us. Now that in turn, uh, influences our spirit, influences our heart. And, and as a result, we're led by the spirit from inside of us to walk with the spirit of God. Now let's think, let's, let's keep that in mind. And now let's transfer over to the organized church. Most of what happens in the organized church is outside of you. It's things, it's activities, it's, it's things going on around you. It's your, it's your activities that you're involved in in the organized church. You could be singing in the choir. You could be running uh, media equipment. You could be, like I said, doing the offering, the greeting. There's all kinds of activities that, that churches try to get their members involved so they, many times, so they'll be working and stay around. But most of these activities, if not most, not all of them, but most of them have to do with things, just activities. And they're things outside of you. So your focus, your attention tends to be focused on things outside of you, not in you. And so, so to recognize the kingdom, we have to realize that this is something that's coming from within. And so we have to be able to decipher between the two. As a Christian in the organized church, because so many of the activities are happening outside of us, we're involved in so many duties or responsibilities that automatically draws our attention to those things. 
It does not cause us to look inward. It does not cause us to look to Christ. It causes us to look to these activities. And as a result of that, our focus in life, plus where we work, our attention tends to be focused on, again, our responsibilities at work and so on. You put all that together, and the Christian life is pretty much composed of people being focused on things outside of them. And so we have to be very careful because we have to make that switch over. We have to become believers who are focused on what God is doing on the inside of us and not what is happening around on the outside of us. Because it's what is going on in the inside of us that is kingdom activity. The issues of life, the answers to life come from within us, not from outside of us. See, the, the spirit within us means that these are heart issues. And heart issues are kingdom issues. And we must, we must realize this. And again, I just want to emphasize, we have to learn as believers to decipher what's going on inside of me as opposed to, so what, because what's going on inside of me is of the spirit. It's kingdom work. The, king, the kingdom is the government by which the spirit functions through. But he functions through from inward going outward. And if we reverse that, then what we have is we, we have a chance to come to be a carnal Christian. Okay, there's there are certain things that take place as when we when we uh, when a person is understanding the kingdom of God and they are focusing on it they will start to have certain, they'll start to make certain statements or they'll start to um, show certain desires. For example, a person who's focusing on the kingdom will begin to want to read their Bible frequently. I find a lot of Christians in the organized church don't even read their Bibles. They, it's, they have one, but you, they don't read it frequently. Uh, but a person who is being pulled by the Spirit of God because they're focusing in on the kingdom of God, they're getting focused on what's going on inside of them, they all of a sudden, they want to read the Bible. They all of a sudden realize that the answers to life are coming from the Scriptures, and they're coming from this relationship that they have with the Holy Spirit. They're coming from heaven itself because they're focusing on the right things. This kind of person would make statements from time to time to other people, other Christians. Let's just get together and do a Bible study. Let's get together and read <clears throat> read the Bible. Let's get together and pray together. Let's. Uh, how about we get together and we spend some time just worshiping the Lord together? These are signs of somebody who 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 is focused in on the kingdom of God. People that tend not to be focused on the kingdom of God typically do not have much interest in doing those kinds of activities because the things that are they're, the things they're giving their attention to doesn't have any desire to do those things. Now here, herein lies the problem. If a person is focused on the kingdom, even though they may not completely understand it, but they're in their heart of hearts, they, they want more of God. They're reading the scripture. They are, they're, maybe they're talking to other Christians, trying to get counsel to make sure they make the right decisions. They're spending time in prayer. They're worshiping the Lord. They're doing all these activities, which again, are things that <clears throat> come from within. And they're doing kingdom activities. If they, if they don't continue to feed this, there's a chance that they'll become influenced by the organized church and be led astray. Now, so how do we participate? So the important question is, how do we participate in this kingdom? This is so important. I've been talking about the difference between the organized church or church service and how it focuses on things around you and how you can get involved in different activities, but never, but never be part, never realize you're part of the kingdom of God. So how... And I've also mentioned the outworking of the kingdom is the true church. It produces what the church is really about. How do we then get involved in this kingdom? I want to read to you two sets of scriptures. One is in Ephesians uh, chapter 2, verses 4 through 7. It says, But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love, 
with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, 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 made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved and raised up together and made us to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. I want to read another another two verses. This is in Colossians 3, 1 through 3, dealing with the same subject. It's talking about the same thing, but it's just written in a different book. It says, If you then are raised with Christ, seek these things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on earth, for you died and your life is now hidden in Christ in God. Now this is talking about, excuse me a minute, this is talking about us encountering the things, the things of heaven. Now, is that even possible? Yes, it is. We are to encounter the things of heaven before we die. We are to be involved in heavenly things, the heavenly, I call it the heavenly reality. Now, as believers, how do we do that? Well, we've been given an invitation, according to these two scriptures, because we have this unionship with Christ. We now, and Christ is in the heavens, because we're united with him. There's, this is the most powerful thing. We have the ability to be infused with the glory of God. We have the ability to be infused with the power of God because of this union with Christ. How do we do this? I mean, these, what I'm talking about here, these, these sounds like lofty ideas, but they sound futuristic, but they're not futuristic. This is stuff that's supposed to be happening right now. How do we do it? What we do is we get involved in, um, in spending time in the presence of God. How do we do that? Well, it, you spend time in his presence by reading the scripture, by praying, by worshiping. Worshiping is a big one. Spending time in worship by yourself or in a group, either way. Now, I'd love to get into more about worship, uh, but I will mention this. In 2 Corinthians 3.18, just read it on your own. I'm not going to read it. But it talks about that when we worship God, it says that we go from one level of glory to another. And through this process of going from one level of glory to another, because we're in Christ, that we are actually being transformed into the image of Christ. In other words, we're being changed to become more like Jesus while we worship. And so it's very important that we spend time encountering God's presence. So, so I, want, I want to em emphasize here the importance of spending time in God's presence. I just want to tell you a, an example in the Bible. I'm not going to read it. It's in John 3, but it's when Jesus did his first miracle. He and his disciples went to this wedding and they got there and they, I'm just going to go through it quickly. They Mary, his mother, came up to him and said they've run out of wine. Well, Jesus took his disciples with him there because they were invited. I, I believe they went to have a good time. But after they had been there a while, uh, Mary came up to Jesus and says, hey, they've run out of wine. Now, Jesus' response to this is, says, why are you, and I'm not saying this for baby, says, why are you bothering, with this, bothering me with, with this? Now is not my time. And so Jesus had no intention of turning the water into wine at that moment. But then Mary does something very unusual. She turns to the servants and said, do whatever he tells you to do. That was a prophetic statement and a prophetic act, a prophetic statement by Mary. So Jesus then turned to his father in heaven after Mary had said that, and he found that the father was, was turning. He saw, he only did what he saw his father doing. So he's turning, you see his father is wanting to turn the water into wine. So Jesus does the same thing. He turns the water into wine. So what he is doing is he's encountering what his father's doing. And his father, of course, we know is in the heavenly places. So he's in direct contact with his father. So we are, we are no different. Jesus is now in the heavenly places and he's, and from the two previous scriptures I read about Ephesians, Colossians, I'm talking about that we have a we now are expected to come up into this heavenly reality and find out what Jesus wants us to do by the Spirit of God. So I just, I just want to wrap this up. So, so to, to, uh, in, to be in participating in the kingdom of God, we must be encountering uh, the, the presence of God continually, a lot, frequently. As we encounter God 
and encounter him over and over, we are participating, like I said, in this kingdom. And by doing this, then the outworking of that in our lives leads to experiencing church as Jesus means it to be, not as, not as, not as we're experiencing day amongst the organized church. Thank you very much.